Our next guest wears multiple hats in her professional and personal life. I'm joined by Emily Reeves, Director of Digital Innovation, avid blogger, social media speaker for Stone Ward Communications Firm here in Little Rock, Arkansas. Welcome back to the program. Thank you. You have a new, fancy, long, great big <laughs> title that you came up with. What is it specifically? Director of Digital Innovation and Insight Planning. <laughs> it, it covers digital strategy planning and also research, basically. Yeah, well, for purposes of our show, you are <laughs> Emily Reeves, Stoneward Communications, so I, that's what you get. I take it. Let's talk about um, some things that are going on in the, um, in the world of marketing and advertising. Your firm recently held kind of an afternoon workshop. I got to come in for a big part of that. I mm -hmm. appreciate the invitation. It was called Getting Your Digital Swagger On. So tell me what you guys were trying to accomplish for clients, what kind of information you were putting out there. Well, we wanted to give people an update on some of the digital communications trends that are out there in the world right now. You know, they change almost on a monthly basis. And since we're keeping up with them all the time, we thought we would help share some of those. And then we wanted to really focus on content planning for digital channels. So we had a panel of experts on paid media, on social media, on public relations and video production to talk about how you can create content for all those digital channels because that's what we find that most of our clients struggle with the most is what am I supposed to put out there? I've got to be on Facebook, I've got to be on Twitter, my website, a blog, you know, and then all these new channels popping up. How do I find the information to, to put out there and, and come up with that? So we had a long discussion about that. Well, let's begin with, with video and TV reach here. Mm -hmm. Appointment TV, mm -hmm. appointment TV is making a comeback. Even though we live in this age of DVR now, why is appointment TV seemingly making a, a comeback? Well, people, there are a couple of different reasons. One would be live events like the Oscars or the Super Bowl or any kind of award show. People want to watch that when it's happening because they don't want the spoilers of reading it online if they happen to be away from their TV or recording it later. Um, and then the other reason is some of these television shows that have huge followings and people are so anxious to watch them that they will sit down and watch them and then have online conversations simultaneously with watching the television program. Like a Mad Men or a um, Breaking Bad mm -hmm. or something along those yes. lines. Yes, The Walking Dead. Yeah, The, the Walking Dead has a, a big uh, online following and Gossip Girls. You know, so th those are the two big ones that for some, not, not yeah, Gossip Girls. Those are the two big ones that have, you know, these, this crazy following of people that want to watch it all you know all together as a community and they want to die and they want to dialogue while they're doing it mm -hmm. so they're using their twitter or their facebook other social media mm -hmm. uh, platforms to kind of talk and, and have these conversations i do it a mm -hmm. lot in our tv show as a matter of fact mm -hmm. uh, sometimes to answer questions from a viewer that might have an, a, a follow-up question that didn't get asked or maybe to let them know that the question's about to get answered, sit tight sort of thing. Right. That's what you're talking about, right? That's exactly what I'm talking about. And a lot of the programs are putting bonus content online that is that only appears live during the programming to help encourage some of that engagement and that appointment viewing television. It's interesting. All right, so DVR usage, though, is still a factor for marketers because once you DVR some programs, if you're not into this kind of real-time dialogue that's going on. You just want to kind of keep up with your favorite shows and programs. You, you're actually, you're speeding through those commercials, are you not? You are speeding through those commercials. And uh, there are many advertisers that are trying to come up with creative ways of making sure their ads are still seen, even when they're you know, fast forwarded through on the DVR. Um, but then you also have the, pro the problem of people recording things that they never actually watch. Yeah, I got <laughs> some statistics on that. Let's mm -hmm. look at some Nelson research. This is from March of 2013. Mm -hmm. One third of weekly TV viewing is now recorded content. However, 41% of that content never gets watched. Yes. And then 71% also want mobile TV service. Let's go to the, the viewing content and that that's not watched. So. Mm -hmm. If a third of folks record these shows, roughly 60% of them are getting watched. How, how does an advertiser, now does it make a 30 second TV commercial not worth as much as it used to be? Not necessarily. The TV commercials are still the best way to get your widest reach. So it, it doesn't make it any less valuable, but what you start doing is uh, becoming a little more creative and how you're incorporating that advertising into the programming. So uh, we've seen, um, you know, advertisers work with the characters of popular television shows mm -hmm. to create like almost little mini series 
commercial vignettes between the programming itself. So people want to watch that because it becomes part of the story or product placement within within the actual television uh, program, whatever it may be, or like I said, getting creative in the way your commercials are viewed from a fast, you know, when people fast forward through them. I saw an interesting VW ad where it was the top opening on the convertible and they did it very, very slowly with just static uh. type so that you got the message whether you were watching it in real time or fast forward. That's very interesting. Well, I'm never very good with the DVR either because I, you know, you've got the different settings to speed it up or to slow it down and I always seem to <laughs> never hit the sweet spot on that. Um, but you also, too, you also have these advertisers that are building longer forms of the storyline mm -hmm. from their commercial spots to take you online to mm -hmm. do that. So that, that's another kind of creative approach. That is a very creative approach. And, and it gives people a reason to go online and engage more with the brand and find more of that type of content that they find interesting. So, you know, Oreo is an example we've used a lot in the last six months because they've done a tremendous job of engaging their audience and really having fun with them you know using their television commercials as an entry point but really having people spend the majority of their time engaging with the brand online because it's it's fun and people want to share some of that content so that that's you know one of those premier examples What's your favorite part, cookies or cream? <laughs> I think they have to go together. They have to <laughs> oh, go together. Oh, so diplomatic. <laughs> All right, let's talk about mobile service. In that statistic, about 71% want more mobile TV service. Mm -hmm. They want their iPads, their smartphones, these other tablets to be able to function as portable televisions mm -hmm. for them. I've got a 5, 10, and 18-year-old, so I know how a lot of that works. What opportunity does this present that's different than the, the traditional dynamic? Well, for, for, for advertisers, it is an opportunity to, you know, run advertising across the, the bottom or the top of the screen. It is an opportunity to sponsor a program and uh, give limited commercial viewing because you're sponsoring a program. If you think of something like Hulu, which is really, you know, an, a, a channel for mobile viewing specifically, you sponsor the program and you can ask for feedback from the actual viewers during the commercial breaks and you're the only brand that's being be, being seen. So there's there's you know a lot of different opportunities and I think it's going to continue to evolve and change as the technology changes. Keep an open mind. All right, we got less than 60 seconds left. I want you to tell me about Carry the Load. This is uh, something that's very near and dear to your heart. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity and an effort to Put the memorial back into Memorial Day. Tell me this about this. Okay, so Carry the Load is an event that actually has a national relay component that started on April 30th in West Point, New York, and it ends on Memorial Day weekend in Dallas. It is a, a, a relay that's going on 24 7 to help people remember the true meaning of Memorial Day. You can walk for five mile segments. I am personally involved because my brother was a Navy SEAL who. Uh, who died in 2011 and I, I wanted to contribute to this cause and help get Arkansans specifically involved across the state. Carrytheload.org is where you can find out more information. She's Emily Reeves with Stone Ward Communications. Thank you so much. Have a great Memorial Day rest of the weekend. Thank you.